Merry Christmas to all of you. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Let us all take a moment now to turn to our neighbors and wish them a Merry Christmas. We pray tonight that our Christmas will not only be merry, but holy, giving, and kind. May, may we all be renewed by the gift of a Savior whom we celebrate at this Mass. At offertory time, I would like to invite all young children here at church to be in the offertory procession as baby Jesus is carried forth to the crib. I will let the children know when it'll be time, or, Father, or Deacon Stan will let the children know when it'll be time for them to come to the back of the church. Our gathering song this evening is number 96. Go tell it on the mountain. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm reading the wrong thing. Oh, come all ye faithful. Please stand. Father Bernie from I'm retired over in Marshalltown and uh, happy to be here with you today. I was here last year as I recall and perhaps before and um, Father Mike probably warned you about me that uh, I have a issue with my voice right now. It's a recurring growth on a vocal cord. I had removed a couple of years ago and it's back and um, probably in January I'll have it again. Uh, so I hope that uh, I can uh, be heard in this service and uh, might let me know if, if it's that, if it gets too bad. Um, I, had a, I had a nice card from Darlene Blake who uh, is usually here at uh, 
when I have, when I have been here, and she indicated that because of health reasons, she cannot be with us today. So let us remember her in our prayers. And gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Today the Lord comes to dwell among us. We sing forever the goodness of the Lord. Prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Let us call to mind our sins and express our sorrow. Lord Jesus, sign of the Father's mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, fully human and fully divine, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, light of the nations, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. This time we will have the blessing of the nativity scene, the manger. Let us ask for God's blessings on this Christmas manger and upon ourselves, that we who reflect on the birth of Jesus may share in the salvation that he accomplished. To each petition, please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. A reading from the book of the and people from the very beginning of creation you have made manifest your love when our need for a savior was great you sent your son to be born of the Virgin Mary to our lives he brings joy and peace justice mercy and love Lord bless all who look upon this manger may it remind us of the humble birth of Jesus and raise up our thoughts to him who is God with us, and Savior of all, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now listen to the word of God.
of the true light, grant, we pray, that we who have known the mysteries of his light on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing. As they rejoice before you at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole, on th the pole on their shoulder and the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed, as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us, upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God, hero, father forever, prince of peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful from David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Rejoice, rejoice, a Savior has been born, a Savior has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord, Christ the Lord, Jesus Christ the Lord. Rejoice, rejoice, a Savior has been born, a Savior has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord, Christ the Lord, Jesus Christ the Lord. Sing a new song to the Lord, sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, sing to the Lord, sing to the Lord, bless his name. Rejoice. Rejoice, a Savior has been born, a Savior has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord, Christ the Lord, Jesus Christ the Lord. Let the heavens rejoice and earth be glad. Let the sea and all within it thunder praise. All Rejoice, rejoice, has been born, a Savior has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord, Christ the Lord, Jesus Christ the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope, 
the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region, living in the fields, and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, we gather this afternoon to celebrate a key moment in our life of faith. We believe in a God who gave life to us, who created the universe, who placed us upon planet Earth, and who gave to us his creatures a nature called human nature, a nature that includes intelligence and freedom. Today we celebrate the sending of his son 
to live our nature, to practice human intelligence and human freedom, then die and rise to save us. God wants from us a personal relationship of cooperation and love with him. And in order to accomplish this, God had to create us free, free to respond to God's call to us, to establish his kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven, free to live in love with God and in love with one another, at the same time, the problem is we can simply be free to be selfish, to love only ourselves, to ignore God, and to use and to abuse our brothers and sisters, to use and abuse the rest of creation. In preaching today the good news that we are celebrating together at this moment, I want to touch upon two realities of life that are topics of daily concern at this time in history. One is migration and the other is the sexual abuse of minors by priests of the Catholic Church. I want to refer to these not as political issues but as they have so much to do with our lives of faith at this present time in our lives and in the history of the world. A theologian named Father Daniel Grody explains, and I quote from him at length, he says, from the call of Abraham to the exodus from Egypt to Israel's wandering in the desert and its later experience of exile, migration has been a part of salvation history. From Jesus' birth, understood as the movement of God into this alien world as a human being, to his resurrection and return to the Father, and from the Holy Family's flight into Egypt, to the missionary activity of the church today, the very identity of the people of God is inextricably intertwined with the story of movement, of risk, of hospitality. Migration shapes the heart of who we are as human beings before God. God in Jesus so loved the world that he migrated into the far and distant country of our broken human existence and laid down his life on a cross so that we could be reconciled to him and we could migrate back to our homeland with God and enjoy renewed fellowship at all levels of our relationships. When we look at the Christian tradition from a migration perspective, we perceive what God is doing in the world through Jesus Christ, and we can understand God's desire to cross over barriers that divide and alienate our relationships. In the incarnation, the birth of Jesus, Son of God, as a fully human being, God in Jesus crosses the divide that exists between divine and human life. In the incarnation, God migrates to us, the human race. God not only takes on human flesh and migrates into our world, but God actually becomes a refugee when his family flees political persecution and escapes into Egypt. The kingdom of God shapes our vision about who we are in the world. The borders that define countries may have some relative value, but they are not ultimately that those that define <coughs> the body of Christ. That is the end of the quotation from Father Grody. And so, brothers and sisters, at this time, we gather as church for a great celebration. The birth of Christ, whom we believe is the fulfillment of God's promise to send a savior to humankind. As church, we believe that Jesus, Son of God and Son of the Virgin Mary, 
lived our human condition without sinning. He worked, he taught, he served, and he died for love of the Father and for love of us. He rose from the dead and returned to the world in his spirit later to share life with us through his presence in his word and in the sacraments of the church, which he established in order to be present with us and accompany us on our journey through life. The church's mission is simply a participation in Jesus' own ministry. Bring glad tidings to the poor, <coughs> proclaim liberty and captive to, to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, and announce the Lord's desire for human liberation for all people in this earthly journey. Each year when my insurance comes due, I review the policy, I examine each item of coverage and its cost, then I look at the bottom and I don't like what I see, but then I write the check. I spend money I do not want to spend because I know that I will not be at peace if I risk not being insured. And in the process of doing this examination, I often, it often occurs to me that as a priest of the Catholic Church, I too am in the insurance business. Because as human beings, all of us have a fragile existence here on earth that someday will end in our death. As a priest of the church, I proclaim that the gospel of Jesus Christ and his presence in the sacraments of the Catholic Church give meaning and direction to our life here on earth and after death the promise of eternal life of peace and joy with God our Father and Creator for those who will follow Jesus in a lifetime of love and of service. I am, if you will, an eternal life insurance agent. Our days might be much easier and more fun for us if we simply did our own thing. If we sought to satisfy all our selfish desires. But, is that all there is? What about everyone else? <coughs> and someday I will die. I believe that Jesus offers us a guide for a full and meaningful life and a promise of a greater and eternal life after our earthly death. <coughs> it always gives me great hope and great joy to celebrate our faith in the birth of Jesus Christ with so many people who come each year to Christmas Mass. I'm happy that you are here. Perhaps you are home for the holidays and are making of this hour an important part of your family celebration. Maybe you are a longtime member of the parish community, but you join with the parish in worship only once or twice a year. And some of you may have come simply because others wanted you to be here with them. Whatever the reason, I am happy for the presence of each one of you because each of us, in our own way, must deal with the reality of being alive here on earth and then someday dying. For me, the church which Jesus Christ founded with his apostles before returning to his Father, is my guide in giving meaning and direction to my life here on earth and hope for eternal life in union with God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit after my death. And as we all know too well, the church in which I believe is very human and at times, and in ways, it is very frail. The sins and the errors of her leaders 
have given to many people reasons and excuses to ignore the church, to leave, to pick and choose from among the teachings of the church. I cannot defend or deny or justify our sins and failures. I can only ask your forgiveness and caution you to not throw out the baby with the bathwater. Jesus and his church are infinitely greater than any of us who may have offended or disappointed you. We are together at this moment to celebrate Christmas, the birth of Jesus our Savior, God becoming human. We each face many challenges every day as we seek to live a good life, enjoy peace, and bring happiness to others. We each have many questions, many weaknesses, many desires. Our Savior Jesus has shown us the way to live and grow in the image of God during our time here on earth. And through the sacraments of the church, Jesus desires to enter our lives and accompany us through life on earth to our death. Jesus has overcome death for us. And Jesus invites us to enjoy new life after death in the eternal joy of the Holy Trinity. My brothers and sisters, we are all migrants, <coughs> pilgrims on a journey. Our home is with our Father. The Savior whose birth we celebrate today is here with us today and wants to be with us always. He is the way and the truth and the life. He wants to always live in our hearts through his church and lead us to our true and eternal home. Let us rise. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God. Light from light, to God from to God, to God to not be, unsubstantial of our Father. Through him all things were made. For us and him and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, he came our man to Mary. And we can For our sake, he was crucified and brought his pilot. He suffered death and was buried. And rose again on the third day. Rejoicing in the coming of our Savior among us, let us pray for the needs of our brothers and sisters everywhere. That the light of Christ shine throughout the church and the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of every country, large and small, rich and poor, 
work together for lasting peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those awaiting the birth of a baby, <coughs> that they be blessed with a happy and healthy child, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the homeless, especially families, find affordable and safe housing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the poor be rich, richly blessed with God's gifts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That families, friends, neighbors, and all present here share the love of Jesus with one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may live forever in the kingdom of our Savior, especially Gloria Halas, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you brought new hope to life with the birth of your Son. You know our deepest hopes. Grant what we ask in the name of Christ the Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The Jerry Franklin family will bring the gifts to the altar today. And now the children are invited to go back in the back of the church to bring baby Jesus forward to the altar. We praise and thank God this evening for sending to us the greatest gift that each of us could receive, the gift of baby Jesus. Now, Amelia Romberg, who will be carrying baby Jesus, and all the children in the procession will represent all of us here as they bring forth baby Jesus and place baby Jesus in the crib. As you witness this event, please be thankful every day for this beautiful gift of love that God has given to each of you.
Our song for the preparation of the gifts is number 110, the first Noel. brothers and sisters, that these gifts we offer will please God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord Lord the May the oblation of today's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray. 
that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, found of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Through the Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop and all your ministers. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of, res of the resurrection. Let us remember the woman who was killed in the accident last night east of, um, east of here with a collision with a deer and all of our loved ones who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. And with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with Joseph, her husband, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. They may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Savior's command, for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. With the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you, Christ. Peace be with you, Jim. Good luck on your search. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am the to the Lord in my and the May the body and blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen.
body of Christ. Let us pray. Our communion song is number 105. What child is this?
Betty, are there any announcements? Nothing? Nothing? Okay, we want to thank Father Bernie for being with us this evening. Thank you. It's always a great pleasure to have Father Bernie here. He brings a great message and his heart's really, really into his uh, service. So we thank you so much. And so we wish all of you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, our God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the feasts of our Redeemer's, our Redeemer's nativity may, through an honorable way of life, become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. To each blessing, please respond, Amen. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world, and by that glorious birth has illumined this most holy night, drive far from you the darkness of vice, and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. May God, who willed that the great joy of his son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives, make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. And may God, who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor, and make you share with the church in heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. So in peace, glorify the Lord my God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Our parting song is number 84, Joy to the World. Um.